Whenever people talk about Tupac's acting career, they always bring up three movies. Juice, Poetic Justice, and Above the Rim, which is now celebrating its 30th anniversary this week. So I recently rewatched it, so let's review. So Above the Rim, it centers around Shep, short for Shepard, who was a former up-and-coming basketball star, but then he was involved in a horrific accident that caused the life of his best friend Nutso. And so flash forward some years later, he works security at this local high school. He witnesses Lee Kyle, who is like him, is also an up-and-coming basketball star, but he's a little hot-headed and full of himself, and everyone is pleading with Shep to basically mentor and stir him in the right path. Meanwhile, you also have Bertie, who also happens to be the estranged brother of Shep and he recruits Kyle Lee to be a part of his basketball team for this street basketball tournament. Now, I'll admit, Above the Rim, it's one of those movies that I just never watched growing up, but I watched it for the first time back when I was in college, and my initial thoughts on it was, that was actually a pretty good movie. But I'll admit, I have not seen it ever since, unless I caught it on TV a few times here and there, but I never really watched it all the way through since that very first time I watched it. But my thoughts on the movie was always pretty positive particularly when it came to some of the performances, like Tupac, which I'll get into in a little bit. But now I'll be watching it for the first time since, and I can honestly say my thoughts on this movie is still positive. Now granted, it's, it's not the best movie, hell, it's not even the best basketball movie, but somebody said this, and I think this is the perfect way to describe it. It's like, it's like a familiar dish, but well prepared. I also forgot about how funny this movie is, especially since this movie does have some dramatic moments but it's really a dramedy. But it's really a dramedy, which is perfect because it just balances out all the comedy and the drama. But I guess one thing I also loved and appreciated about this movie is just, well, really any movie from the 90s, I just love the 90s aesthetic, particularly with high schools, because I don't know why, but a high school I went to, it was still new. And so anytime I go to a high school that's been around for a long, long time, I just always like to go to like the Hall of Fame section or just see high school teams from different decades and eras. And it's just like, wow, this school really has some history. And that's how I feel when I, whenever I see a movie in a high school from the 90s. It's like, wow, I feel like I've been there and this this has some history. Now, before I get into the characters, I got to talk about the intro of this movie, which is about Shep, in which, like I said, he was in an accident. And that accident is he was on a he was doing a one on one boxing game with his best friend Nutso. And he he dared him to try to touch the rim. Apparently that was on top of on the top of this building. But Nutso, he goes for the rim and he falls down. And I um, mean, one who the hell builds a basketball court on top of a building? Two, it is a bit silly. But regardless, it does set the movie in motion. It does set the story arc for the character Shepard, played by Leon Robinson. And I'll admit, I haven't seen everything Leon Robinson is in, but I've seen most of his early stuff. And I say this is probably my one of my favorite performances of him. I ain't saying it's his best, but I like Leon Robinson in this movie. Well, he, at the time, he was just called Leon. But Leon, I just like how, you know, he was a little hot-headed, as we saw in that intro, but then he's gone through some stuff and he's had life changes and and now he's just a little bit more introverted. He's just trying to figure out what's the best way to move forward after tragedy and he finds solace in, he does find solace in love and mentoring. Shep is definitely the heart of the story. Now there's Kyle Lee, played by Dwayne Martin, and like I said, he's hot-headed and full of himself, and we definitely see that, and it's definitely more confirmed once Shep starts dating Kyle Lee's mom, and he's just letting that distract him and throwing him off his game, and and even at the beginning of the movie, with his hot-headed hiss, and then he sees Shep, and he just thinks nothing of it. He thinks he's better than him, and he just needs somebody to basically ground him. And I thought Dwayne Martin, he definitely brought that to this role. And it definitely added to his whole arc in his film, which is basically him being so hot-headed. Then he comes across Leon, and he teaches him a few things on how to improve his game and then improve as a person. And then he goes into the tournament, and then he gets in with the wrong people, but then something happens and then by the end of the movie you just leave on a good note. I also like how they didn't really give Dwayne Martin no love interest in this movie. Granted it was given to Shep in the movie but still I like that the filmmakers have the good sense to be like no we don't need to add this to his story arc. He's going through enough right now. He's going through a bit of an arc. Now of course I mentioned Tupac in which like I said people only mentioned three movies when talking about Tupac's acting career. Juice, Poetic Justice, and Above the Rim. And while this probably isn't my favorite Tupac performance, 
he was still great in this movie. He brought all the charisma to this role, and you definitely feel for him as a character as just someone that is just the little brother of a former basketball prodigy, and then his family struggling, and so he has to do what he got to do to protect his mother and provide for his family, and so which he turned to the streets, in which he thought that was the right thing to do, but then I also love the relationship between him and Shep, in which Shep, he's on the straight and narrow, but, but Birdie, he resents him for that, and he resents him for leaving his family. As good as Tupac was in the movie, I just wish that they explored that aspect just a little bit more. Marlon Wayans is in the movie, probably one of the earliest roles, but in this movie, he's a bit of a dummy, and then he just ends up getting bullied, by Tupac in the movie. But he's just there to serve the arc of a lot of the actors in this movie. And speaking of early performances, Wood Harris is in this movie, which I never realized that was him. But ultimately, he's just playing the henchman of Tupac. But hey, this movie is just a stepping stone for Wood Harris and the type of actor he will become in more movies that we would see him in. Another actor I never realized was in this movie is Bernie Mac. And I'll say the same thing here, like I said, doing House Party 3. And just like House Party 3 last year when I watched it for the first time, anytime I see Bernie Mac in a movie I've never seen before, it's like I'm watching new comedy bits from Bernie Mac. And that just makes me miss and appreciate him more. And anything that makes me miss and appreciate him more is good in my book. But he plays a crackhead in this movie, a funny one at that. Some of the other supporting characters in this movie that's trying to stir Shep to help Kyle Lee is the coach and the mom. The mom is the love interest of Leon and I already talked about how that's causing friction but the coach also knew Shep and he's the one basically trying to push him to you know you don't have to keep doing a security job you, you could do a lot of good around here teaching these kids taking over because I'm getting ready to retire and lastly I got to touch on the music which was produced by Death Row Records. Of course we all know the one song that everybody knows Regulate by Warren G and the late Nate Dogg, Rest in Peace. And then you also got the song Pain, which is sung by Tupac and is played during the opening credits of that film. Very solid soundtrack. Like right now, I'm gonna go back and listen to it on YouTube because it's not, because the whole soundtrack is not streaming on all platforms, but yeah. But like I said, Above the Room is like a familiar dish, but well prepared and I couldn't agree more. Happy anniversary. This is definitely one of Tupac's more iconic performances and some more iconic performances from other actors such as Leon Robinson and Dwayne Martin. And it's definitely a classic within the culture. I'm gonna give Above the Rim the hard eyes emoji.